Got H50 on a diet of chlorophyll, roughage, bean curd, and enriched starch. You're gonna eat this. You're gonna eat this. She seems resistant to feeding. What's going on? What is she doing in this room? What, what, you, you can't let her out. What's the problem? Well, specimens need to be contained. Don't call her that. What do you want me to call her? Dren. Dren. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Whether you're a creative, a lifelong learner, or a curious beginner, Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Skillshare offers thousands of amazing classes across multiple fields, including illustration, design, photography, video editing, creative writing, and more. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes, so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. I'm always trying to brush up on my writing, editing, and understanding of photography in order to ensure my videos and thumbnails are improving over time. I've also embarked on a creative journey working on a yet-to-be-titled sci-fi novel over the past few months, and have found a number of Skillshare classes extremely helpful, including Storytelling 101, a nine-part video class by New York Times best-selling author Daniel Jose Alder, which explores the four C's of storytelling, character, conflict, context, and craft, as well as a framework with which to develop a captivating story that feels alive. And another one of my personal favorites, Science Fiction and Fantasy, by fiction writer and professor Lincoln Michelle, which has given me the tools to effectively engage in the overwhelming task of refining the world building for my galactic epic, and ensuring the POV of my characters is clearly communicated to readers. The folks at Skillshare would love to inspire a summer of creativity and learning, so the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare to start exploring your creativity today. Directed by Vincenzo Natalie, Splice is a sci-fi thriller that stars Adrian Brody and Sarah Polly as two biochemists who begin to blur ethical lines with their genetic experiments. The result is a creature that is both human in appearance, but disturbingly mysterious. Formerly known as Specimen H50, this human-animal hybrid is the stuff of pure nightmares, teetering between the familiar and the abhorrent. While Splice poses several thought-provoking questions about the moral obligation of scientific experiments, it also offers up one of the most unique movie monsters ever. As we ponder these larger-than-life concepts, let's take a look at the story and H50, aka Dread, an obvious example of what happens when you push the boundaries of science. The film is a cautionary tale about a team of scientists who perform genetic experiments at their research facility, cheekily named the Nucleic Exchange Research and Development Lab, or NERD for short. The lab is headed by Adrian Brody's Clive and Sarah Polly's Elsa, two love-struck experts working on the cutting edge of genetic splicing, who successfully hybridize several species, resulting in a pair of worm-like organisms nicknamed Fred and Ginger. What are they doing? Imprinting. Contracted by a large pharmaceutical company called Newstead Pharma, Clive and Elsa attempt to isolate CD356, a protein-producing gene found in the creatures with incredible medical applications. While they're happy enough with their success, both scientists dream of taking hybridization to the next level by utilizing human DNA. But this dream is shot down by Newstead Pharma, who instead encourages the pair to begin working on stage two, the mass production of CD356, Dejected but not defeated, the pair work tirelessly in private to manufacture the world's first animal-human hybrid, and despite struggling with the ethics of continuing the experiment, following a breakthrough that enables a stable hybridization, they decide to proceed with the artificial birthing process. The result is specimen H50. While most normal organisms require months of gestation, H50 reaches full growth in just a matter of days. Realizing the rapidly growing H50 was restricted by the artificial womb, Elsa reaches her hand in to help and is stung by its stinger, which retracts into its lengthy tail and delivers an unknown toxin, putting Elsa into a seizure-induced shock before being cut out by Clive. As a result of this, partway through the film, Elsa attempts to remove the stinger by cutting off the end of the hybrid's tail, and while the process seems successful at first, the stinger returns, showcasing the amazing regenerative properties of the CD356 gene that her body produced. Spilling out onto the floor and detaching itself from the umbilical cord, H50 initially appears as a rounded pod with a stinger-imbued tail as its only defining feature. Just a few days later, it emerges from its birthing sac, skittering around the confined lab. 
After dosing the hybrid with a sedative, Cliven also do some rudimentary observations and realize that it's undergoing an accelerated life cycle, likely a result of the abistoma gene contained in the monster's biological makeup. While we're never given an exact biological composition of H50 in the film, it shares many of the same components as the earlier experiments Fred and Ginger, who themselves were spliced with genes taken from birds, horses, fish, kangaroos, salamanders, sharks, and some plant DNA, with the marked difference of also having human genetic DNA, courtesy of Elsa. What's the profile? Jane Doe. Anonymous female donor. Queen medical and heredity. Diamond Dodger. Though it shares much of the same genetic structure as Fred and Ginger, the human element makes H50 a far more dangerous life form. None of our animal components have predatory characteristics. Well, there's the human element. As an infant, parts of her body are still not fully formed, including her arms and many features of her face. But from the beginning, her eyes are set on either side of her skull, with a notable split down the center. In the early stages of development, she appears hunched over, struggling to stand on her two legs, and while the creature is bipedal like a human, her legs are connected at three pivotal joints. Similar in structure to a kangaroo, they bend backwards at the knee and rejoin at the ankle, providing significant agility and exceptional balance. Early x-rays of the hybrid also reveal two mysterious internal organs that are initially misdiagnosed as tumors, but are revealed to be an amphibious set of lungs, showcasing a diverse genetic adaptability. Though not capable of speech at this stage, she emits loud squeals and screeches as a form of communication, and it's at this point in development that the arms, ears, and other facial features begin to take shape, growing more human-like in nature as her appetite increases. With the creature growing too large to secretly contain in the lab, Clive and Elsa move the experiment to an abandoned farmhouse that belonged to Elsa's late, mentally unstable, and neglectful mother. This was your room? Mm -hmm. I thought you said your mom left it just the way it was. She did. Much like Elsa, here Dren begins her adolescent stage, revealing her ever-increasing startling human-like appearance and intelligence, as demonstrated in some of the cognitive tests performed approximately a month after her birth. Nerd. <coughs> yeah, I'm a nerd. Using a set of Scrabble pieces, she's able to spell out simple words like nerd, earning her the nickname Dren, which is simply nerd spelled backwards. And she even uses the board to vent her frustrations, explaining that her life was tedious and that she yearned to be outside. She spelled tedious. Where does she get a word like that? She's telling us she's bored. She's been stuck here for a week. Do you, do you want to play a game or something, sweetie? In addition to changes in cognition, a few other variations occur, including the formation of her human teeth, an appetite for meat, and the further development of her adult female form. Apart from a slightly elongated skull, spiked tongue, and star-shaped pupils, here her facial features are distinctly human. The creature's arms and torso are mostly normal in appearance here, with the exception of slightly disfigured hands. Similar to her feet, her hands only have four digits, but this does not reduce her dexterity. It's also interesting to note that she initially displays maternal instincts after finding a feral cat inside the barn, an instinct that is undone by Elsa when she eventually takes the cat away from her. Understandably frustrated, Dren tries to escape and nearly falls, saved from death by her next stage in evolution. Sprouting insect-like wings from her forearms and armpits, as well as spiny protrusions from either side of her spine used for balance, Dren reveals that she's able to fly. Apart from attacking Elsa early in the film, the creature is mostly docile and evasive, choosing to escape from danger rather than confront it. But as its frustrations mount, Dren begins breaking the rules set out by Elsa and Clive, before giving in to its unnatural life cycle and instincts. Once Dren reaches full maturity, she undergoes a biological change of sex, which is foreshadowed earlier with Ginger. Coming together to enact nature's timeless story of love. but not before an exceptionally awkward scene where Clive is seduced by her. The creature then enters a comatose state as it undergoes this final transformation, likely a result of the fish DNA in its physiology, as there are several aquatic species known to also undergo similar organic sex changes. Here, the physical features become markedly different, with a significant increase in size and bone density, along with minor changes to facial structure, making it look more brutish.
The rapid increase in testosterone, paired with pent-up aggression towards its captors, then causes Dren to unleash an immense tirade, killing all men within sight to showcase its dominance, before forcing itself on Elso. Whether looking for food or simply wanting to inflict pain, the creature uses its incredible agility, heightened senses, wings, amphibious lungs and stinger to attack in the air, on ground and underwater with lethality. I got it! Ah! But despite its overwhelming evolutionary advantages, it contains the same weaknesses as humans and is easily dispatched by a vengeful Elsa with a heavy rock to the head after being impaled by Clive. You could have stopped him at any time. You could have just said no to work. <sighs> Try some time. While Dren is killed, the film ends with news that Elsa is pregnant with its hybrid child. Not only this, but she's actually planning on giving birth to the new species, under the supervision of her employers at Newstead Pharma. Nobody would blame you if you didn't do this. What's the worst that could happen? While the ending left the door open for a sequel, unfortunately, Vincenzo Natalie has been clear about not wanting the message and impact of Splice being tainted by sequels that he may not have any creative control over, as was the case with his amazing feature film debut, Cube. But with that being said, that's all for today, folks. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and if there's anything else you'd like to request, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. Look, this wasn't supposed to go this far, okay? Wasn't even supposed to go full term. But it did. I'm sorry, what happened and we were just gonna prove we can do it? So what are you saying? You really gonna kill it? Hmm? Do you think you can do that? <laughs>